Hello everyone. Welcome to the eighth and final day of our DSA bootcamp. Today we shall be studying about merge and quick sorting algorithms. And at the end of our session, we shall have a small recap of all the concepts that we went through for the past eight days. So merge and quick sort are very easy and interesting concepts to understand. And uh, as I said in our last session uh, about the basic sorts that we studied about, they don't really have any wide scale applications and they are only used for educational purposes so that we can understand how this sorting uh, concept works. So if anybody recalls day one, um, our first session, uh, does anybody remember what kind of algorithms are these merge and quick sort algorithms? Can somebody just unmute their mic or send the chat? We studied about the different kinds of algorithms. And um, I said uh, something about the merge and quick sort and what kind of sorting algorithm are they exactly? Does anybody have an idea? So these two sorting algorithms are based on the divide and conquer method. Exactly, Tanman, divide and conquer strategy. So a merge sort uh, algorithm uses binary search technique, which is also a kind of divide and conquer method. And quick sort algorithm uses the divide and conquer strategy to carry out its sorting. So in merge sort, we um, have a helper method called the merge function which we use to carry out our merge operation, which we'll look into soon. And quick sort has a pivot function around which this um, sorting algorithm happens. Let's take a look at um, an overview of our merge sort. So as I said, sort works on the binary search technique. And in binary search, you simply keep on dividing the list in half until you reach a base case that is essentially uh, when your list becomes a single element list. So uh, in merge sort, you have this merge function, which merges sorted lists into um, a bigger sorted list. So for that, we keep on dividing our list until we reach a single element list. And by definition, a single element list is considered to be sorted. So we carry out a merge operation on a single uh, element list then two element, then four element list, like that. And at the end, we have merged all of our elements and we have sorted out our list. So we keep on dividing it in half until we find eight different single element lists here. And then we carry out merge operation on them. And then um, we finally return our uh, new sorted list. As you can see here, we took four and five, we sorted them, one and seven sorted them, two and three, six and eight, we got four new lists. Then we carried out sort on it, merge on it. You'll see how exactly this merge function runs. Now let's take a look at this merge function. So in merge, uh, we see we have different sorted lists here. As you can, as I said, uh, merge function runs on sorted lists. So uh, in order to carry out this operation, we simply start iterating through the elements of our list one and list two. And one by one, we compare them and we add them to a new list. So for that, we shall be having two uh, variables to ease our operations. As you can see here, for one index, we have declared an i variable from index zero of our list one and then a j variable starting from index zero of our second list. Now we shall carry out comparisons between uh, values stored at index i and index g. As you can see, one and two are compared, one is smaller, so we add it, and then we increment i, but not g. Then we uh, compare uh, this new uh, value at index i with j, and then we find out here in our example that j, uh, value is smaller than i, then we increment j instead of incrementing i. Then we again compare it 
to the element at index i again and again we fi keep finding that the elements in our second list was smaller and now we have this list remaining so this uh, is already a sorted list so we'll simply append both of these values into our new list since this is a sorted list this function will definitely run successfully because this is an already sorted list now let's take a look at the code for our merge function so a merge function shall not be dividing the list. That is the task of our merge sort function. Just a minute. So our merge function will simply take in two in, uh, lists as its input parameters and carry out the merge operation on it. And we shall be using this merge function in our merge sort function as a helper method. So as I said, we shall be having a new list. We shall uh, declare it as a combined list, an empty list. And then we shall be declaring our i and j index. Now um, we shall be having a while loop that iterates through uh, both of the lists. We shall have our i variable that runs through list one and then our j variable that runs through list two. And then we are carrying out these comparisons. As you can see, the element at index i uh, of our list one and the element at index j of our list two shall get compared. And if uh, the element at index i is less than element at index j, then we shall be appending uh, this uh, value at index i into our combined list, as you can see here. Otherwise, if that's not the case, and also we shall be incrementing i by one, and if that's not the case, then we shall be carrying out this same operation on the element at index j. As you can see here, we have our else condition for that, and then we shall be incrementing j by one. I hope this is clear. And uh, as this function continues to run, uh, in our specific case, we found out that we were able to uh, append all of these values, but seven and eight were remaining still. So if that's the case for that, we shall be having one more, two more conditionals, one for list one and one for list two. And that is if i is still less than the length of our list one, then we shall append the rest of the values into our list two, we'll, uh, into our combined list, and we shall continue to increment i by one. And then we shall have this same condition for our uh, second list. As you can see here, it's the same, uh, same code lines just for our second list. And then at the end, we shall be retain, returning our combined list. So this was a pretty uh, interesting concept to understand. It was quite easy to, so as you can see, our merge function takes in two different lists. And when we carry out our merge operation on it, we have returned the sorted list. Now we shall be taking a look at uh, merge sort. We just take an introduction. So merge sort carries out three important steps. Uh, it's the responsibility of our merge sort function to keep on breaking the list in half until the base case, that is the length of list is equal to one, this base case is reached. And when we finally get um, a single element list, we shall start carrying out merge operation on it. First of all, we will continue to break our list until our base case is reached. And then we carry out our merge operation on it. Now we shall be, uh, carrying out this concept using the recursion concept. And uh, you shall also be seeing a visual of how this merge sort function works in our call step. So as you can see, our merge sort will be taking in uh, this new uh, list as its input parameter. And when we run this function on our list, um, our uh, function shall uh, get pushed onto our call step. This instance of function on our list will get pushed onto the call stack. So we want to start dividing our list. And we want to keep on finding out a left side and a right side for it, for our list. So for that, we shall be declaring an index, which will be the mid index, which shall return the uh, index at the middle position of our list here. As you can see, we carry out this operation on it, uh, length of list. Uh, upon two. You can also carry out this flow division on it and it shall return the same value, integer value. As you can see, for this uh, four element list, our mid index will be equal to two. 
and now we shall be dividing our list and for that we shall be declaring two different variables and they shall be list variables so we will be essentially creating two different lists which will be our left list and our right list and then we shall carry out our merge operation on them as well let's take a look at how that works as you can see our left list will start from index 0 to the mid index minus 1 uh, i hope everybody remembers how this uh, code line works when we say colon mid index it shall run from 0 to mid index minus 1 so when we declare our left uh, uh, list variable here we shall have a list containing value at index 0 and index 2 minus 1 uh, which is 1 as you can see here since our mid index was 2 we shall have uh, a new list with uh, index 0 and index 1 and then we shall be um, declaring a new list on the right side of our mid index we shall start from mid index to the ending of our list as you can see here i hope there is no confusion until here so we have returned left and right list and now we shall be returning this merge function on this new list that we have got here on our left side and our right side so before doing that we shall have to first of all run merge sort again on our left uh, left list and our right list so that we can finally reach the base case of a single element list for that also we shall be declaring a new line as you can see here so before doing that let's just run um, our function in the call stack as you can see when we first uh, call this function on our list 3142 it gets pushed onto the call stack and then we declare um, a left side uh, list which is this three and one uh, uh, element list and then we will be carrying out this merge sort operation on this particular list as well as it is pushed onto our call, call stack. Okay, so when we carry out merge sort operation on this two element list here that we can see, we shall end up returning uh, a new list, a single element list, which will be three here. And then as our base case has been reached, we shall be returning our new list, my list. And then we shall be popping off this instance from our call stack. Now we have we are done running this left uh, index, left uh, list uh, variable instance. Now we shall be doing the same for our right side. Richard, do you want to say something? Okay, let's continue and now we have declared a new uh, list a single element list as you can see here with our uh, right variable here as you can see now we are done running our left and right operations for our uh, three three and one element list now we are done running this left and right code line here now we shall be running this merge operation on the elements of our list this three one so we had our single element list of three and one after we carry out our merge function on them uh, we shall be returning a sorted list here as you can see one and three this is our new list and now we are done with running merge sort on this uh, small list that we had declared here this left side of our big uh, list here three one four two now it shall be popped off from the stack now we shall be carrying out the same operation on the right side we are done running the left uh, conditional left uh, code line for our uh, first list here now we shall be running a right uh, code block for our code, for our sorted list here for our new list here now as you can see we keep on dividing it then we reach our single element list then we return that list we pop it off from our call stack we are done with our left variable now we are moving on to our right variable we return this single element list over here 
Now we're done with running this entire code line. Now we shall be returning merge operation on this left and right here. As you can see, now it shall be returning a sorted list. Now the same operation shall be run on these two element lists as well. If we remember exactly what our merge function does, it shall continue to iterate through this first list and the second list. It will compare, uh, continue to compare all of the values. And then at the end, we shall have returned our sorted list here. So this was our merge sort code. So this is our custom input 3142. And as we run our merge sort operation on it, we shall have a new sorted list 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's take a look at it in the score. If somebody wants me to repeat the concept, just raise your hand. I will repeat the entire concept again. Otherwise, you can unmute yourself or send a chat. Any doubts until here? Uh, OK, Samadip wants me to repeat. Do you want me to? OK. Yeah, can you repeat the merge function once again? I'll repeat the merge function. So uh, one thing to keep in mind about this is that the merge function shall not be the one who divides our list in half. A merge function simply iterates through two lists that it shall be taking in as its input parameter. And what it will do is you will be uh, declaring an i index for our first list and a j index for our second list. And you shall continue uh, to iterate through these lists. And with each and every single iteration, you shall be carrying out a comparison between the element at index i and the element at index j. So again, I'll say the merge function carries out merge operation on sorted lists. So um, uh, when we first start uh, running our merge function, we shall actually be running it on a single element list which by definition are considered to be sorted. So here you can see, uh, we shall be taking in actually a big, in big instance here. Uh, we have one list uh, of values, one, three, seven, eight. As you can see, this is a sorted list. And then a uh, second list, two, four, five, six, which is also a sorted list. So we shall start from um, index i and index j. Now we shall be taking the value at this index, index i, and we'll be comparing it to the value at index j. As you can see, we found out that the value at index i, that is one year, was lesser than the value at index j, which is two year. So since that is lesser, we shall be taking that value and appending it to our combined list, our empty list. And uh, what shall be doing is if the value at index i was lesser, we shall be appending it into the combined list. And then we shall be moving on to the next index, i plus equal to 1. Again, we shall be running the same comparison. And in this case, the value at index j was less than the value of index i. So 2 is less than 3. So we shall be appending it into our combined list. And then we shall be incrementing j by 1. And we shall continue to do this operation. So as you can see, 3, uh, which is uh, the value at index i, will get compared to 4. And we shall be adding it to our combined list over here. Now our uh, i index has been updated. And now the value at index i is equal to 7. Now we compare the uh, value at index j here. We compare 4, we compare 5, we compare 6. And all of them are lesser than uh, 7. So we just keep on combining. Uh, Pending them to our combined list, we com uh, continue to update J until we finally reach the end of our second list. And we found out here that um, we still have uh, two elements left in our first list. So as this is already sorted, we shall know that if we uh, simply append these into our combined list, we shall be getting a sorted list. We added five and six, and now we shall simply run through this rest of the elements of our list one and then we append it into our combined list. Let's take a look at the code for it. 
our merge function. We shall be uh, our merge sort function shall have divided the list into half and half until we finally get a single element list. And our merge function shall be running on the single element list, then two element list, and then we'll continue to do this. It is second. Okay, this is our merge function here. So our merge function shall be taking in two sorted lists as its input parameters, list one and list two. Now we shall be declaring an empty list, our combined list. Now we shall also be declaring an index i and an index j, which will be equal to zero. Now i shall be our variable that iterates through list one and j shall be our index that iterates through j, uh, list two. So we have our while conditional for it. Um, and I shall be running until we finally reach the end of our list and G shall be running until we reach the end of our second list. So we shall be carrying out comparison on index uh, value at index I and index J. And as I had explained before, um, if index uh, value at index I is less than value at index J, then we shall be combining or uh, adding it. Uh, Mihir, do you want to say something? Mihir and Sushila. Hello. Okay. Um, I actually couldn't catch what Mihir said. You can um uh, how about instead of unmuting yourself, we just send a chat. Okay, let's continue. So as I said, uh, if the element at index i is less than the element at index j, then we shall be appending uh, the element at index i into our combined list. And then we shall be increased by one. Otherwise, if that's not the case, then we shall be doing the same for um, value at index j which means we shall be adding the value into our combined list and then we shall be incrementing j by one. Now, uh, as we saw our special condition where our first list was still not, uh, some elements were still not added into our combined list. For that, we shall be declaring uh, a new while conditional, which shall be iterating through the first list. And then we shall simply start appending the rest of the values into our combined list. And we shall ha have the same while conditional for our list too, if in case uh, something like this happens to our second list for any other instance. Is this clear, Samiti? If it is still not clear, you can tell me. Uh, no, it's clear. You can continue. Okay. Uh, so this was it for our merge sort. Are there any doubts in the merge sort function? If there are, just raise your hand. We saw how the merge sort function runs. Now we shall be going to our quick sort algorithm. Now quick sort is also an algorithm that uses this divide and conquer strategy. And uh, as in our merge sort function, we had our merge function as our helper function. In quick sort, we shall be having a pivot function as our helper function. And all the operations um, will be carried out around this pivot uh, function that we are going to declare here. So let's take an overview of our um, quick sort. Let's take a look at our pivot first of all. So in quick sort, uh, we shall be going through the indices again. And there are actually various methods to declare this pivot index. We shall be declaring a pivot index in our quick sort. Um, and that shall be carried out in our pivot function, actually. So in our case, we are going to declare pivot index to be equal to 0, which means the first element of our list. And now we shall start comparing this pivot index to the rest of the index. Now what we shall be doing here, is just take a look here. At the end of our pivot function, we shall actually have 
um, a left side, which is the elements that are lesser than our pivot index, and a right side, which are the elements greater than our uh, pivot index. And then we shall simply take this pivot index and swap it with the uh, small elements list. So as you can see, four will get swapped with two. And uh, I'll just take this. So this would be our new list. And then we shall be carrying out our pivot function again on this left side of our list and the right side of our list, uh, right side of our pivot actually. Uh, and we'll see how that actually works. So um, we are, in order to um, visualize it properly, all the elements that are lesser than our pivot index shall be colored in yellow, and all the elements that are greater shall be colored in green. So we'll see how this works step by step when we take a look at our quick sort intro. So what essentially happens here is we shall be declaring a pivot index, and then we are going to start comparing it to the rest of the elements. So for that, we would require a for loop. So we have our for i loop here, which shall start to iterate from pivot index plus one to the end index plus one, uh, because we want to reach the very end of our list. And we shall be declaring a pivot index. And initially, we shall be declaring a swap index as well, which shall be uh, at first equal to our pivot index. So just take a careful look at what happens here. We compare four and six. We find out that six is greater than four. So we won't be carrying out any changes. We shall simply move on to the next element. Our for loop will continue to run. And just a minute. Yeah, so first we were at um, our value six. We found out that it is greater than our pivot index, so we don't do any operation. Now we move on to our next element, which is one. And one is less than the pivot index. So in this case, we shall start swapping the element at index i with the, uh, uh, with the element that is greater than um, our pivot index. So in order to carry that out, we shall update our swap index to be equal to the next element. And this operation shall only be carried out if we come across an element that is less than our pivot index. As you can see, we found out an element that is less than our pivot index. And so we will be carrying out our swap operation. So for that, we will be updating our swap index. So now our new swap index is the one uh, holding the value of six. And we shall be carrying out a swap operation on these two. As you can see, one and six are swap, so swapped. Now we shall be moving on to the next element. We find out seven, it is greater than um, four. So we simply just color it in gray. We don't do any operation on it. Then we move on to our next element. We find out three here. And three is lesser than our pivot index. So again, we shall be simply just incrementing swap index by one. So it shall start pointing towards six one more time, and then we shall be swapping three and six. Just take a look here. As you can see, three and six have been swapped. Now again, we came across uh, our next element uh, from our i for loop, which is two. Two is also less than four. So again, we shall be incrementing our swap index, as you can see here. So our swap index will now be equal to seven our seven value here. Now we shall be carrying out a swap operation on i and swap index. And then we will continue to iterate until the end of our list. Then we find out five, which is actually greater than pivot index. So no operation will be carried out on that. Now we have um, a small list of all the elements that is lesser than our pivot index. Now we have another index that is greater than uh, pivot index, all the elements that are greater than the pivot index. So at the end, when we shall have iterated through our entire list, we shall simply take our pivot index and we shall be swapping it with the swap index here. And uh, every single time when we swap uh, index, uh, swap pivot with our swap index, we are actually going to swap it with the last element of all of our uh, uh, elements that are smaller than pivot index. 
as you can see here, two is part of this uh, small sublist of all the elements lesser than four. And we shall, uh, and it is the last element here. So we shall be carrying out a swap operation between four and two. As you can see here. And now uh, when we um, are defining our quick sort function, we shall start, uh, we shall first of all run our pivot index, uh, pivot function. And then after we are done running this, we shall be returning this swap index. The swap index is nothing but our pivot index. So uh, the reason why we're uh, saying return swap index is because the value wouldn't be changed. Or the index wouldn't be changed. The value would get changed, but the index wouldn't get changed. So when we return our swap index, we are actually returning our pivot because uh, in just the last operation, we exchanged pivot with the swap index. So our swap index will get updated to the value uh, that was our pivot. So our pivot function shall be returning this swap index. And this uh, swap index is important to carry out our quick sort function, as you can see, uh, as you will see when we uh, will be declaring our quick sort function. And then we shall be carrying out this pivot operation on the left side of our pivot and on the right side of our pivot. And you shall see how that works. So this was our introduction to pivot. Now we shall be taking a look at how the code will look for it. So we have our list here. We have our pivot function declared. And um, for that, we shall first uh, have a swap uh, function. You can, um, again, as I have said before, since uh, this is swap operation between elements of a list, we can simply say my list uh, index one comma my list index two is equal to my list index one comma my list index two. That is an easy way to swap elements of a list because lists are immutable data types. So as you can see, our pivot functions takes these three input parameters. Let's take a look at this. It's, uh, it takes in a list as its input parameter, then the pivot index, which in our specific case shall be equal to zero and the end index, which means uh, the last index of our list. We shall be using this end index to for our for loop to iterate through our list, carry out comparisons. So as I said, we shall be initializing swap index to be equal to pivot index, which shall be uh, given as an input parameter and a pivot function. And we shall be having our uh, I for loop, which shall start from the uh, index that is uh, greater than uh, one uh, greater than one by our pivot index. And then we shall continue to iterate until the end of our list. And then we shall carry out comparison between the element at index i and our pivot. And then we shall, uh, based on that, update our swap index. And after we update our swap index, we shall simply carry out our swap operation between the, the swap index and the i index elements. So um, just a second, I will show the swap function one more time. So our swap function shall be taking in list and indices at its as its parameters. So when we run our swap operation in our pivot function, so we shall be carrying out our swap operation on the uh, swap index value and the value at index i. As you can see from the visual here, you shall swap one and six. And then you shall continue to do this until the end. And then we have our new sorted sublist. And then at the end, when we are done running this pivot function, we shall simply carry out our swap operation between pivot index and swap index. So as you can see here, our pivot index value gets updated to swap index. And when we return our swap index, we are actually returning the pivot. And uh, it shall actually be uh, returning the index, not the value. So in our case, four is uh, located at this swap index. 0, 1, 2, 3. So um, when we run our pivot function, it shall be returning 3, which is the index of our pivot here. I hope there was no confusion until here. Now we shall be running our custom input on it. We have our swap function, we have our pivot function, and we have our list. Now we are going to run our pivot function. 
starting from pivot index zero and end index, which is the length of our list over here. So it shall be returning the swap index here. And uh, this swap index is actually important for our quick sort code so that we can uh, easily uh, use this swap index to carry out our uh, quick sort operations. So now we shall be defining our quick sort function, which shall again be taking in our uh, list as its input parameter. And then we have declared a left and right uh, parameter here. So as I said, the swap index that gets returned in our pivot function is important and we shall be using it in our quick sort code. So we shall be storing that swap index into this pivot index variable here. We shall be running this pivot operation on uh, the list that we give it. And after that, uh, we shall have uh, this pivot index, which will be equal to our swap index. Now, uh, as you can see, as you can see in this example, pivot index shall be equal to three, which is the index that stores our value four in it. Now, uh, we shall be carrying out this quick sort operation on the left side of our pivot index and the right side. For that, uh, you will be uh, taking in this left parameter, which shall be starting from zero. When we actually give our custom input, you'll get the idea. And then it will go on until the pivot index minus one. So it will go from zero to one to two. So this, uh, so we shall be running quick sort on this side of our pivot index. And then we shall be doing the same on our right side, which means we shall start from pivot index plus one until the right side. And right side is nothing but the index, uh, this right variable that we're talking about is nothing but the uh, last index per list. So, um, we don't have a call stack visualization for this, but um, again, here also the concept of recursion shall be happening. So when we run this code, we shall be carrying out quick sort on this, which means we shall be running our pivot function on this because when we uh, run quick sort on the left side of our pivot, then we shall be uh, returning a pivot index for the left side. And we'll continue this operation until we get single element lists and then we can't carry out our quick sort operation anymore. Is that clear? So for that, we shall be declaring if less left less than right. Um, so we, this condition shall stop running if left is equal to right, because if that is the case, then we have reached a single element list. Is that clear? So uh, are these three lines of code shall be running on this if conditional here. And at the end, we shall simply return our list. So we have our swap function here, our pivot function, and our quick uh, sort function. As you can see, in quick sort, we have uh, given input parameter for our list, for our left variable, and our right variable. So as I said, there are various methods to implement the quick sort function. Uh, you can declare any value. Uh, any index to be equal to the pivot index. You can have index zero to be equal to the pivot index. You can have the last element to be equal to the pivot index, or you can take any random value. So in our specific case, we have defined our pivot index to be equal to zero. Now um, let's make this code more convenient for us. We don't want to have to uh, put in this left and right parameter for all of our quick sort uh, implementations. So we'll simply change this quick sort method and we'll call it quick sort helper instead. And uh, by default, when we uh, run our code, we shall first of all change the name everywhere. We shall change it from quick sort to quick sort helper. And then we shall be taking in our quick sort function. We shall be declaring a quick sort function and what we want our quick sort function to do is simply take in the list as its parameter. We don't want it to declare this left variable and right variable. That shall be the task of our quick sort helper. So what uh, our quick sort function shall be doing is it will be returning our quick sort helper function. And our quick sort helper function will be the one that is responsible for uh, declaring this left variable and our right variable. And after we run our code, we shall be getting the same output. We shall be having a sorted list. 
actually um, uh, we are done with the concept um, and there is an uh, there is a website uh, called scratch and it's actually a, a website made by mit and uh, there uh, i actually found out some visuals for our sorting techniques let's just go to the website so you guys can also go to this website and uh, there are various users here and you can just uh, share your projects so there are various animations uh, that can teach you various different things so as you can see this uh, user here d scratch ninja so this person here has uh, made various projects and you can see they have also ha um, made visuals for our various sorting operations so let's take a look at this we also have our basic sorting methods here i actually remembered about this today uh, we can also go through them as well if you want to so we are loading our merge sort here now let's just a minute i will i will turn off the voice turn off the sound here i guess there is an option for it I don't know how to turn off the voice actually. Let, let it go. Let us play. Can you guys hear this uh, audio here, this music here? If you are, just raise your hand. No. Okay, in, okay, okay. Only. Okay, okay. So this is our visual here. They have also given an explanation. Uh, I'll just uh, uh, keep the screen on for five seconds. And after five seconds, I'll move on to the next page. Just read whatever is written here. Okay. Let's go. Is the uh, concept uh, understandable until here? Not audible. Yeah, I'm not speaking anything actually. I said that I'll just uh, keep the screen frozen for five seconds and then I'll just continue to iterate. I just said that uh, just read whatever is written here because if I read over what is written, it might get confusing for you to understand. Should I start again, Tanmay? Uh, does anybody want me to start this visual again? Just raise your uh, hand. Yes, if you just start it from starting, please. Okay. I'll just reload this page. I'll just uh, wait for five seconds. After five seconds, I'll move on to the next window. Just read whatever is written here. So it's essentially saying what I have been saying. I 
if anybody is uh, having difficulty in understanding just raise your hand i will explain it otherwise i'll continue As you can see, we keep on comparing and then we append it. Now these are already sorted lists. Now we are going to carry out this operation on an unsorted list. So I guess it's over now yeah, because I can't see any next point or arrow. Uh, was this visual helpful in understanding the concept? Do you want to go through the rest of the visuals as well? We can display them here. Just raise your hand if you want me to. I guess nobody wants to see the next visuals. Do you want to see bubble sort, insertion sort, and quick uh, selection sort? For quick sort, I saw their uh, visual explanation, but they actually took pivot index to be equal to the last element, so it would make the concept a little more confusing. Did this visual help in understanding this uh, sorting algorithm, or no?
okay then my could understand rest everybody do you want me to uh, show the rest of the sorting algorithms as well there is there is uh, selection sort insertion sort quick sort bubble sort Okay, if uh, no answers, then uh, I will assume that you don't want me to go through the rest of the sorting techniques. Okay, so this was it for our DSA bootcamp. With this, we shall have finished studying about all the relevant coding interview relevant concepts for DSA. Um, let's take a quick recap of everything we learned from day one to day eight. So day one, we studied about big O classes, pointers. Uh, big O is nothing but uh, time complexity notation. It is the worst case scenario, which is what we shall be uh, using for our real life applications. And in classes, uh, classes are nothing but a blueprint uh, for uh, making various objects with its, with its uh, for our custom needs. Then we studied about pointers that are nothing but references. Then next day, we studied about linked list. And linked list is nothing but, um, in a way, it can be compared to a nested dictionary. And for that, we had our node class, which uh, took in two parameters. That is the value and our next pointer. And all of our operations for uh, our single linked list and double linked list involved manipulation of the next and the previous pointers. Simply, that's all that we needed to do. Then uh, day three, we studied about stacks and queues. And we implemented stacks and queues using our linked list. Stacks follows the last and first out operation. We carry out push and pop operation for a stack. And in queue, we have our first and first out principle. And we all uh, have uh, in queue and DQ operations for our queue data structure. Um, then on day four, we studied about hash tables, which use a hash function to generate a key, which is essentially an index uh, where uh, in the location which is the location where we store our key value pairs. And uh, hash functions are used in cybersecurity and to generate passwords. And uh, it's actually a much more complicated concept when we study about it in cybersecurity. We just took like a brief overview on it in our hash table concept. Then day five, we studied about trees and graphs. Now, these are algorithms that are used by our social media sites, and they are used in AI and ML to uh, go through our network. And then based on that, they suggest us uh, people to follow or they tell us uh, who are our mutual friends along with another friend. So we in trees, we studied about the binary search tree in uh, which actually uses the binary search technique to carry out our operations really quickly. And in a binary search tree, uh, all, of the all of the children to the left are lesser than the parent node. All of the children to the right are greater than the parent node. Then we studied about various kinds of graphs. Uh, there is a weighted graph, unweighted graph, unidirectional graph, and bidirectional graph. And in graph, we studied about the adjacency matrix. We used it to simply uh, get an understanding of how the vertices are connected to each other. And then um, we studied about the adjacency list. And we used our adjacency list in our codes for our uh, adding edge and removing edge operations. Then on day six, we studied about heaps and recursion. And uh, heap is nothing but a simple binary tree. It's not a binary search tree. And a heap is a concept used in priority queues, where the priority of the elements matters a lot. So the there is either a max heap, where the in, uh, first element has the highest priority. And uh, there is a min heap, where the first element has the minimum priority. And we actually implemented our heap data structure by a simple list, uh, a simple array. And then we studied about the concept of recursion, uh, which is nothing but uh, a concept where a function keeps on calling itself until a termination case is reached. Then yesterday and today, we started studying about algorithms. We studied about three traversal algorithms, BFS and DFS, which are used in AI algorithms and in backtracking algorithms. Then we studied about basic sorts, bubble sort, insertion sort, and selection sort, which are um, actually uh, sorting techniques that do not have 
a wide scale application but they are used for educational purposes just so that we can get an idea of how sorting technique works and today on our final day we studied about merge and quick sort algorithms which use the divide and conquer strategy and they have much better time complexity than our basic sorts all of our basic sorts have a worst case time complexity of o of n square which is uh, not applicable for us so this was our quick recap of all of the concepts